One, two, three, four. McCartney Midnight, Midnight with Brian Bastard. Bastard. You're watching the show again. <laughs> hey, everybody, again. Welcome to the show again. Blah, blah, blah. We really got to get better at that. I know. Uh, anyway, well, it doesn't matter. Wait, I think there's this only isn't one a person thing right watching. now. What happened to this? Um, hey, everybody. So we're trying to project He Man behind us. We're watching He Man tonight. We're watching He Man yeah, tonight. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to stand up every now and then. No, just full screen it on Netflix. Just full screen it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but, um, just switch the episodes. Uh, anyway, so welcome to the show, everybody. It's gonna be a very cool, calm show tonight. Yep. Not um, a lot going on. We got a good amount of show. Not too much, not too little. Yeah. Is that a... That's a cigarette. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we got some stuff going on. I have a really bad headache, though, and Brian's pretty tired, so... I feel great. What are you talking about? All right, fuck me. I don't know. Whatever. Shut up. You were and, complaining about it like like four hours ago. We got cake. And we got cake that um the wonderful Miss Sam Moberg made for and us. And speaking of Sam Moberg and Mark Schwaller, we also have instead of our usual Dr Pepper tonight, our sponsor is Dr Bob, the uh, slightly mentally deficient but just as hilarious brother of Dr Pepper. Uh, more in the field of neurolinguistics rather than he's a, he's a brain podiat- surgery. Yeah, he's, he's a, a podiatrist. podiatrist. He's a podiatrist. That's a good one. He's a podiatrist. Um, no, no offense to any podiatrists out there. Because we know work. so many podiatrists watch this show. Um, Podiatry, it's a thing with me. Um, you know, the only person I know who's ever had a podiatrist who said, like, yeah, I gotta go to the podiatrist, and it's like the same person every time as my girlfriend. And she's loved her podiatrist. She was like, she said it was like the most amazing. Does movie. her podiatrist watch the show? Um, uh, no. Do you know that the, her podiatrist doesn't watch the show? Well, mm-hmm. well, we have two viewers right now, so. And one of them is. And one of them is you. Hey, single person, we're broadcasting to. We hope you're enjoying the show um, so far. Yeah, basically, we're doing this to you. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, dude. No, no, no bear news. Um, I guess uh, he's you're jumping the gun here. Um, yeah, whoa. We're so, still on welcome slash greetings. Um, how's that cake? How's your day going, one viewer? Yeah, how's your day? Greetings. Welcome. Um, great. Great. Cool. Oh, that's good. Thumbs up, man. We had a great, I had a great weekend. I was away at Swid. At this big, kooky, happy festival, and it was music. And it was really uh, a whole bunch of uh, very interesting, extremely nice, almost frighteningly at points nice sometimes people. Um, I hate nice people. These people were great though, um, and uh, awesome music, and um, the woods, and a really really cool spot and. Dude making flutes and I don't know all kinds of all I kinds love flute of Yeah. So um anyway. This is actually in my bed. Um I'd venture to guess it's identical to Dr. Pepper. Almost. Uh my Everyone weekend smiled. Oh hey, now all the viewers are showing up. Hey new guys. Hey new people, we're welcome just, to the show. We're just chatting a little bit, waiting for you. Just tell um, you what's been going on. My weekend was not as eventful at all. I got a haircut. That's what I did this week. Oh, I read uh, Beowulf. Sitting at Starbucks on Saturday, I just read. I just sat down and read Bail. That was very nice. Uh, and then yesterday, I was yeah, actually all of it apparently. Yeah, all of it. It's not very long. I mean, it's like 150 pages. It's very short. It's actually there's no the Beowulf is actually uh, all the copies that exist. Yeah, there's only ever been one original manuscript of Beowulf ever found. Yeah, and it was missing leaves. Yeah, so they don't even have a complete story. There's yeah. like chunks missing. But Seamus Haney does a pretty good job putting it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, in any case, uh, yesterday I was actually recording footage um, to start some new animating of like Roger Rabbit type stuff, animating monsters into the real world. I'm pretty excited for that, to start that. Um, and it was fine because usually when I'm walking around Boston taking photos or something like that, nobody pays any attention to me. But when I'm standing next to a tripod with a camera on top of it, People are like just come up to me and like, hey, what are you doing? Like seriously, like 
like like six times people just like walked up to me or like well we're walking past like what are you doing one guy actually said hey you're recording video cool i was like yeah yeah i am weird uh and then another weird part of that same day was that yesterday or the day before i saw three sets of twins that one day that's weird okay oh i forgot we started like we're already eight minutes into this shindig all right, news. You're asking about bears? Any more bear news? No. No more bear news. I looked for it. I looked for it and looked for it. Um, there was a guy who started a thread trying to come up with a name for the Cape Cod slash Brookline bear. I don't think he really got any catches. Uh, you know, Berkshire. Berkshire. His name you know, is well, Berkshire. You know, I actually learned that this bear is from the Berkshires, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I ran into people from the Nature, um, Conservatory. That's not the, what they're called. Nature, um... The Nature People. The Nature People stopped me on the street and I talked to them for a really long time. They were like, yeah, that Brookline Bear, he's from, he's from, he's from the Berkshires. I was like, what? Um, so yeah, Bear, Berkshire. Okay. Berkshire that, Bear. That's what we'll call him from now on. Berkshire? Berkshire. Like Berenstein But, Bear? um, there hasn't Berkshire. been anything. I think maybe that was the, the grand finale. Was um, Berkshire? He's re thing. he's retired now. Yeah, I wonder if there's gonna be any more bear news. Um, I feel like you know it was a fad and it might be over. So I'll see if I can pick up on the next fad now. But who knows? There might be more bear news. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's been a, a pretty slow news week. Um, but Sam had some interesting stuff that he made me aware of, which got totally got me up. What was this? Um, uh, a, a, a long time ago, like ten years ago. Um. There were mummies discovered in Scotland, um, buried in a hole in Scotland. And just to clarify the term mummies, mummification is, you know, the act, it's like kind of the fossilization of the skin and to, to preserve flesh rather than, you know, having the flesh rot away and just have the bones or... Well, skin and bone. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's the process of a, of a body being preserved. With the soft parts still yeah. on it. So we're not talking about mummy, like wrapped up mummy. We're talking about like footsie type mummy. The thing is yeah. that that's what it is. But the thing is you can mummify it deliberately. Yeah. Like the Egyptians did. And this, I think one of the interesting things about it was that they were the only mummified, deliberately mummified, deliberately preserved remains of people found outside. Outside of Egypt, yeah. Egypt from that time period. Yeah. Um, so anyway, these, yeah, Scottish mummies. Uh, found in a hole in Scotland, and uh, basically, um, just in a hole, just in just, a pit. Just in a pit. No, they were buried, and uh, you know they they were taking them apart and stuff like that, and trying to identify where they came from and when they came from, and they noticed some weird things about them. Well, you know, while they were while they were uh, while they were, let's just call it dissecting them. There was a an infant and her rather an infant and the infant's teenage mother um, were buried there and alongside a male and a female body. And when they were inspecting the male and female bodies, what they found was that the male actually had, uh, you know, the torso and arms of one person, and then the neck and skull of another person, and the jaw, lower jaw, of yet another person. Uh, and the woman was similarly kind of yeah. piecemeal together, different so arms like, and stuff like, like that. Like, like Frankenstein. Literally like Frankenstein. Like these people had just been stitched together. And what they found was that the they'd actually been dead for... 600 years. 600 years before they were buried. Yeah, these people preserved the preserved the bodies before they actually buried them. Preserved a whole bunch of bodies, took them apart, and stuck them back together. And one of the people also had their two front teeth knocked out. The woman. The woman had her, her two front head. teeth. She was holding her two front teeth in her now, hands. What, what it said, this is all just crazy. Now, what it said in the article was that they thought maybe this was kind of a documentation about heritage. And that if you literally, the way to prove that you had a uh, right to be living on the land that you were living on was, you know, it was by lineage. And the way to prove your lineage, what's the matter? No, don't worry about it. Way to prove your lineage was to literally have a preserved body of a person lying around. Now, I don't buy that personally. Um, I think that they must have had way better ways 
to, you know, document things than having dead bodies lying around. And if that was the case, why have they only found one case of it? I believe that this was crazy-ass uh, Scottish magic. Um, like what? Like, like the necropants? Is that what you want me to tell? Uh, okay, I know I know a lot of the people who, uh, who um, watch this show, obviously. But, I gotta unplug something. Uh, it's fine. I gotta unplug that or that or that. Unplug. Unplug that. And then plug the power strip into it. Take that power power strip and plug that so in there, and then that. plug that shit into the power strip. Yeah, you got it. Um, so necro pants. Um, the f I I was lucky enough to know about the necro pants spell, which is why this sounded necro like necro pants, it's like, like something straight out of adventure, like time. crazy Celtic magic, because they had all kinds of stuff. Now the where the necro necro pants kills me. Oh, thank you. Um, you look, uh, you look good too, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> the way the Necropant spell worked was that, uh, what you do, first you need to get the consent of the person who you'll, you'll be Necropantsing. Consent! And, um, and they need to die of natural causes. So you go to someone, you say, hey, when you die, can I Necropants you? And they say, okay, and then they die. And then you skin them from the waist down. Flay. Um, yeah, Flay. Um, all in one piece, no rips, no anything, all in one piece, um, so you have, like, basically a hollow, just waist-down skin, like pants, but with the feet on the end, and, like um, footsie, footsie, footsie skin. Yeah, and, um, you then, oh, go then what you do is you steal a coin from a widow on Easter, a gold coin, and, uh, you, you take... The, the dead skin and you stretch it on over your own skin and if you've done everything right up till this point they fuse to your skin but your real skin is like, still underneath like there, right? scientifically or magically they fuse like, like magically one? okay magically they fuse. I mean it's like they're attached so it looks like when you look down it's like there's no seam at your waist it just goes from that but your real skin is underneath there so it's like it branches out to your skin and their skin I guess. gross and then you cut open the the uh, yeah dick and all, and uh, that that's important too because what happens is your dick you know goes inside the dick, um, and then <laughs> to do urethra's lineup too. I gotta assume so, yeah. you know, because the thing is these are on for life now. Yeah, right, because right, right, yeah. they're fused. Yeah, um, and then what you do is you cut open the scrotum, which now your scrotum is inside, so it's not like your you know, cutting up your balls open. But you take the coin that you stole from the widow and you stuff it in there. And you stitch it back up. And now what happens is every time you cut that open, there'll be a coin in there and you can take it out and spend it. No matter what. So you have an infinite supply of coins coming out of your scrotum. Now, has anyone ever done this? I have questions. Yep. Okay, first of all. I mean, I have lots of fucking questions. First of all. Yeah? Do your toes fit in their toes? Yeah. Like, what about your toenails? They're in there? Do they start growing out of their toes? I think they probably just stop growing. That's gross. Uh, second, do you have to be male in order to do this? I guess so. If that is the case... Well, I, the person who you pants has to be male. Right, so, the, but the, 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 the scrotal coin wearer, the skin wearer... If they were female, would they basically would be like a sex change? Like a Viking well, magic Well, no, I'm just wondering, would, would it still work? I mean, What's if the that? point of this is to get a coin out of your balls every time you need a penny... I guess I, I would assume it would still work, but, like, maybe, like... I mean, it wouldn't bodily really, functions it wouldn't would line be, up. would be yeah. an issue at that point. What about your butthole? What if that doesn't line up? Are you going to get, like, poop well, in your legs? I, the thing is, they clearly didn't like think pants? this through very well. They <laughs> really didn't. This is complete madness. What if, what if, when, like, you're, what if when you're flaying the person, you accidentally pull out their sphincter, their anal sphincter, and it just comes out? Do you have to kind of shove it up inside okay, yourself? Okay, okay, okay. Hold on a second. They didn't think this far. They didn't even think as far ahead to say, like, well, oh. they were well, fools. Well, 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 I mean, what? Someone... I just wonder how this was assembled. Because obviously this was never done. This was never completed. This is what I said to myself anyway. 
was I said, no one's ever done this, so they must have just ass- they must have just assumed that this would happen. And where the hell do you come huh. up with that? Someday from? someone will t- put someone as a skin on their pants. But while I was I was searching this today after we were talking about the mummies, um, and sure enough, Google it, Sam. Google Google necro pants. Google image necro pants. And screen share it. <laughs> um, hang on. Let me yep. just make sure that... Yep, okay. Necro pants. Oh, my. And there they are. Someone got necro pants. Someone actually got necro pants. There you go. There they have it. Y'all seeing that? That's brutal. Mm-hmm. Can you still hear us? I just want to make sure that you can... Yeah. Yes, yes. So. Wow, look at that. So now, someone at least tried this at some point, you know? That's weird. Oh, I like this chick. Did she get necro pants too? Is that what's going on here? No, I don't think so. No, she has beer goggles on. Are you not eating your frosting, Sam? No, I, I can't even touch that or I will Dude, burst I'll into diabetic flames. Um. Oh, here, here you go. Here's some necro pantsing for you. Uh, that's something different, but, you know, along the same lines. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Anyway. Woof. So, I think people are giving the ancient Scots fully too much credit. Yeah. Because people were crazy. Um, but in a good way. In a good way. I mean, pretty much, you know, just in an ancient craziness way. Um, who the hell knows? Yeah. Logic wasn't finished in <laughs> 3000 BC. So, um, yeah, it's just crazy. It's really interesting. Anyway, um, in other news, uh, for some of those of you that care, um, Scott Pilgrim is a really good comic book and they're actually putting out full color versions of it. Just check it out online on onlypress.com. It's a, it's, I'm super excited. It's a really good comic. You should all read it. And they're putting out hardcover, full-color versions. Let me tell you, Sam. Okay. We found a stack of comics in the trash about a week ago. Yeah. And Scott Pilgrim was in there. It was number three. I know. I was there when we found it. Now, I've been kind of it. reading through it. Now, you said, don't start, you know, start from the first one. So, I was like, ah, eh, I will. But I saw the movie and everything, so I know the story. So, if I jump in the middle, it won't be a disaster. No, I really like the movie. And I tried reading this comic, and I couldn't get into it. I don't know. Because you started in the middle. I just, it's not even, I just, it's, it's just the style of it. First of all, I can't tell any of the characters apart because of the fucking, the way the art is. It's because you started in the middle. Okay. I don't know. I just find it, like, like, oppressively hip. That's know? the point. It's, that's, it's supposed to be like that. Okay. You gotta start from the beginning. I'll start from just the beginning. Just start from the beginning, okay? I'll okay. lend you the other books. Just okay. start from the beginning. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to move on to a new segment we have now that will either be be- weekly or semi-weekly or bi-weekly. Or, or whatever the fuck we feel like. Quadriquely. We started a weekly segment last week and we don't have it. Yeah, whatever. So, we're going to clear out of here. So, no sports today. Yeah, no sports today. Instead, uh, w- you know, we've been kind of like dicking around with art and stuff. So, we're changing art and stuff into something very different, but probably better. Uh, Brian and I are going to clear out... And our good friend, uh, Mark Tang, is going to come in here, and for exactly five minutes, he's going to spew about art. Because I don't know anyone that can do it better than Mark Tang, who can just talk about, who can just talk about art off the top of his head. Just I think that should be the name of the... the, the I think Mark Tang spews about art? Mark spew. Mark's... That's, that's the name of the Mark segment. Mark spew. Okay, anyway, everybody, we'd like to welcome Mark Tang onto the thing. Mark, you can sit in either one of these fake chairs... And you have exactly five minutes, starting at the point when you sit on your butt. I'm going to time you. <laughs> Hello. Careful of the, the chair that you're going to sit on. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take the ad. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, go. All right, stuff. Go. Right. So, today, class, um... Fuck, that sounds really boring, doesn't it? Remember, you only have five minutes. Yeah, all right, right, right. 
We're going to talk about Pruitt Igo. Why are you such a dick about this? And now... Because <laughs> it makes it fun. It's throwing me off, man. <laughs> Just keep going. Shut up. <laughs> no, um, so we're going to talk about Pruitt Igo. And for those of you who do not know what Pruitt Igo is, it was a housing project. And I'm sure you're probably burning with deep curiosity asking what does a housing project have to do with art and stuff. Um, Aside from the fact that they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like projects. But anyway, the reason why I want to talk about Pruitt Igo was that it was just such a complete fuck up that, you know, it was cited as the death of modern architecture. And I think I would like to like, use this segment to kind of question the notion of, you know, is modern architecture dead? Why did Pruitt Igo fuck up so bad? And you know, what can that teach us, you know, about our art practices today? I mean, even if we don't have about work, it has nothing to do with modern architecture at all. So, um, let's backtrack a little bit, and I'll give you a little bit about the history of Pruitt Igo. Um, Pruitt Igo was built in, in 1959, and it was enabled by a certain act called the Housing Act of 1949. Um, I'll get into the Housing Act of 1949 later. But for now, I would like to talk a little bit about <clears throat> um, what it was like, how it was built. It was basically a huge, huge, huge plot of land. They built these really glorious-looking 11-story apartment buildings. Um, can we pull out a picture of it? No? Okay, fine. Then imagine. Imagine the most awesome, modernist apartment. And it was, it was known... Okay. It was colloquially known to be a... Oh, shit, it's right here. Alright, um, it was colloqu colloquially known to be a poor man's penthouse, and when it started, everyone was really excited about it, it was like the, you know, it was on the, all the postcards and all that, everyone was like, fuck yeah, St. Louis, Pruitt Igo, we're gonna, you know, eliminate poverty through awesome design, and um, fast forward to 1970, it's demolished because the only people who were living there were drug lords and, drug lords and gangsters, and people were like, you know, didn't even know whether they'd be able to, like, get home without getting shot, like, somewhere in the complex. So it became a scary, scary place that led it to be, um, that led it to be, um, demolished eventually. Okay. And, um, and it's, it'd be really interesting to see why that happened. And I think the first part of the puzzle that we can go to would be, um, to... I'll cite something from the documentary that I saw in it. Um, it's a documentary called The Myth of Pruitt Igo, or The Pruitt Igo Myth. The Pruitt Igo Myth. Yeah, you should, you should totally check it out. It's an awesome documentary. Anyway, um, apparently it seemed really awesome when it f everyone first got there. Everyone was stoked. Apparently the first few years were really awesome. The tenants loved it, and that is the awesomeness of Pruitt Igo right there. Doesn't it look like an army of children staring into the sun with smiles on their faces? <laughs> um, but anyway, it was awesome as balls, and then it kind of fell to shit. And I would like to backtrack now to the Housing Act of 1949, which um, basically this act was put together in order to repopulate America after the war and deal with, you know, the expanding population. St. Louis was a city that was on the rise. And they were having problems because the slums in the city were getting wider and wider and wider and wider. And it was lowering property um, prices in the main areas of the city. So they decided to take all the poor people, push them out, and put them all into Pruitt Igo, this grand, awesome place. However, this um, Act of 49... Um, how much time do I am taking out? I'm probably going late. Keep going. All right. However, this Act of 49 really fucked things up because in the process of letting all these people move to Pruitt Igo and like creating, creating all these laws in order to like help housing developments in the city, it also totally subsidized rural housing and had some laws um, that enabled a lot of business to move outside of the city, thus um, really giving economic reasoning for sub suburbia, you know? So this was... The Housing Act of 1949 is one of the big reasons why... America's got this beautiful suburban sprawl that covers everything natural and good. Um, and these people all came in there, found themselves jobless and fucked. And of course, everything between the lack of funding for maintaining Pruitt Igo and 
lots of pissed off jobless people there that fell to shit, you know? And in addition to that, there's this sense of like really, this real sense of control. And I, and I would like to like bring this to art in contemplating how these systems, the Public Housing Policy Act, the notion of queer I go this one size fits all poor man's penthouse and suburbia, how these link to art. And I think they link to art in something I would like, in a way that I would like to refer to as grid modernism. Um, grid modernism would be the aspects of modernism which would be, um, that's not a term by the way. Um, I know. Yeah, grid modernism would be the aspects of modernism that refer to a certain essentialist notion, the idea that you can reduce a painting to like its bare essentials and necessities, let's get rid of everything else. It's the same kind of thinking that leads to like, you know, buildings with large glass and stainless steel squares and the idea that like the best way to live is with, you know, lots of square stuff that, you know, would be really terrifying to fall on. Like, I can't look at a modernist like building without thinking like, damn, those things look sharp, you know? But anyway, um, I think there's this idea of one size fits all and that if you can get your thing down to its most essential elements, whether it's a painting or architecture or whatever, that people, that's the best way you can do it. And I think this um, paradigm is still very alive today. There's the concept of the all-inclusive city in which you know, everyone should be in like one giant city, like one giant building, which is a city. And I mean, none of these exist, but they're, I think, I think, you know, some are exist in like experimental prototype stage, but like, you know, none of these exist in a practical level, but on paper, they're quite popular for a while. And even Apple kind of has this concept, you know, they're really saying, oh, it's simple. It just works. It's a magical device. Don't fuck with it. Do exactly with this computer what we intend you to do, because this is, the essential is what a computer should be. What's more than that, they do that with their architecture. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think when you take a bunch of people and put them in a building that... Or the argument against modern architecture is that if you take a bunch of people and you put them in a building and you say, this is the essentialist way to live, they eventually go nuts, you know, because people don't want to live in boxes. However, there's all these other factors that said, you know, maybe it wasn't this modernist essentialist design thing that fucked Kurodaigo, but it was more a policy thing. It was more a lack of care for the thing. It was more it was outside the designer's hands. But I wanna ask whether all these policies, the Housing Act of nineteen forty nine, which drove all the business outside of the city and screwed over the residents of Kurodaigo, whether the um <coughs> desire to repopulate the um, rules in Kuridaigo, like it's actually kind of a strict, kind of a strict place for the residents. The lack of upkeep, the lack of interest in upkeep, whether those issues also fit into this modernist, modernist essentialism. And the way I like to think about that is like this idea of the suburbs. You know, where to me the suburbs are kind of essential, the same way Kuridaigo is, in which. You know, they decided for white people, you need a garden, you need a, ho a white picket fence, you need your, you know, self-sustaining house or whatever, you need your car, and it is kind of still that modernist grid, a very different grid, but a grid nonetheless, you know? So you're almost saying white people in one grid, black people in one grid, and, um, yeah, and I think those systems of, like, really segregating and getting people to where they essentially so-called need to be you know, are pretty much as modernist as the physical grid or building itself. And, you know, in this, I think the fundamental problem here is that one is bad intention, of course, but I think like beyond the bad intention, I would like to suggest that it's a lack of emancipation on the people. Like, it's like you are too dumb to know how to live, so let me teach you how to live through certain design and life principles. The credits were in my head, yeah. Um, so, we I don't ten know. 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Yeah. What am I gonna say, what am I gonna say? Uh, yeah. yeah, why, I guess, you know, what, as an artist, here's my question to you artists out there. 
What do you guys think of your audience? Do you think you have to provide every answer to your audience and really dictate the way they go? Or do you think it should be a more freeing experience, one where your structure is not quite as limiting as pure Daigo? There's a little bit of a jump. I'm sorry about that. I'll get better at this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Excellent. That was complicated. Yeah. But thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark Tang. So, um, yeah, that's a bunch of craziness. Um, I, I, I would say if I had to add, uh, you know, the, the policies um, and the uh, original intentions of the housing projects, not just Pru Daigo, that's probably one mm. uh, extra special example. But of all of them, um, probably, you know, the, all of the policies and everything was really what made um, the whole, all the, the housing projects around the country uh, really fail. I mean, I... But I don't think modernist architecture helped anyone's sanity at all. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, compared to Singapore, where, like, this shit actually kind of worked, you know? Yeah. Because Singapore didn't really... I mean, most people in Singapore live in housing projects. Um, mm -hmm. And although people are kind of well off, they're fed, they're watered, they're electrocuted... Mm -hmm. um, they're electrocuted. Yeah, that's, because... That's, I mean, the one, like, <laughs> that's the one problem, is that you're constantly being electrocuted. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you're fed, you're watered, and what, what yeah. do you say for electricity? <laughs> um, but it's still kind of miserable, you know? It's this real existential problem about living in a box that someone else designed for you. Yeah. And, you know, I think when you're making art, you are kind of designing certain boxes for people, like, in their minds, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're giving them certain, like, guidelines to say, like, think about this this way and to what extent like what what are the edges of the box like are they like concrete or are they porous I don't know I don't know the edges are porous ah thank you Mark Tang Mark you going to come back next week and talk about typeface I think right for five minutes mm -hmm. was that the plan Mark Tang tonight Something you like had that, you had eleven minutes to talk sorry that I, was eleven minutes uh, I didn't yeah. stop you because you were on roll <laughs> thanks sorry I, I where is our host? I can't just co-host alone. <laughs> and where's this co-host cup? That's a real important question. It's over there. Hey everybody! It's McCracken at Midnight! McCracken at Midnight with Sam! Oh, there's Brian. <coughs> okay. So, um... Now on to, um... St st stupider shit. Like Spider-Man. Hey, I saw Spider-Man last night with Kara Ferguson and Amari Bratcher. And I am really conflicted and confused, dazed and confused about what this movie means to me. On He's the one hand, I'm sexually about confused. After seeing Peter Parker. Yeah. Well, let me just say, it, it, right off the bat, uh, Emma Stone yeah. is yeah. the most gorgeous person on the entire planet. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I, I, it's, you said it's it much just, more eloquently than I would have. It's just, I like, I don't even understand. I, I, I just, uh, those are my words for that. Yeah. Anyway, the movie itself was terrible. It is not a very good movie. Whoa, 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 whoa. Earlier today, you were, you were like. I'm not there yet. Okay. As a movie, okay. it's a bad movie. This is not very good. It's got. Pretty bad pacing, and the direction is not terrible, but not very good. The actors are good, but they don't really know, seem to know what to do with themselves sometimes. Really just the main two kids. They, everybody else is pretty good, but they, they don't seem to be um, directed in any real way in certain romantic parts. Uh, and, you know, just as a movie, it's not a very good movie, but... I feel like I loved it, and I really don't know what to say about it, because... <sighs> Did you love it because you wanted to love it? No, I. you know what, I went into the movie last night saying, this movie's gonna suck. Kara said, what do you think, it, or Amari might have said, hey, what do you, how, do you think it's gonna be good? And I said, no, it's gonna suck. And he was like, what, you haven't even seen it yet? And I was like, I know, but I know it's gonna suck. Because I didn't want to like it at all. And not that I didn't want to like it, it's that I didn't, I wanted my expectations to be absolute zero, so that if it turned out to be a 1% goodness... I would be surprised. I would I would be in a good mood. So anyway, I went to see it, 
And the opening credits come up, and it, you know, has all the webs falling towards you, and it's like all the webs come at you, and it's like Spider-Man in webs. I'm like, nope, this is already going to be terrible. Nope. <sighs> but then it gets into it, and like, it's good Spider-Man. It's just very well done Spider-Man. Sam Raimi did a really good job. I can't, I can't figure, you, you're like, oh, it was awful, but it was so good. The movie was bad. I can't bad. figure out. Okay, it was not a very good movie. So what are you, why, what are you saying was so good? It, the Spider-Man part, it wasn't a good, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a bad movie, but it's awesome. Okay. It's not a good movie, but okay, everyone I see, I see loved what you're it. saying, huh? Yeah. Two different, two different schools of thought. Awesome and good are two different things. In okay. Uh, it, it, in terms of, you know, film quality, yeah. it doesn't have very much, but it's awesome. Um, anyway, it's really good Spider-Man, and everyone's complaining right now about how, you know, it's like... Ten years since the first Spider-Man movie came out, and we already got another first movie. Uh, and um, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, there are two different Spider-Man movies. There are two different Spider-Man movies. There are two for two totally different generations of people. Um, this new one is much more for a generation like mine that grew up on Ultimate Spider-Man with Bendis and Matt Fraction and. Mark Miller writing a couple of things and all that sort of stuff. You know, the you know big event Marvel comics, um, which is why, you know, they're making Avengers movies because, you know, that's why those sort of things work because they're big events. Um, oh, who, who gave us this, this, um, they had, information. which one? They, they would have had to or they would have uh, given up the rights to the franchise. They would have had to make a movie? Yeah, apparently there was political shit going on. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, Marvel, Sony still made this, Sony made this movie again. Uh, and um, probably it was like, yeah, 10 years Marvel gains all distributing rights or something like that to the Spider-Man name in film or something like that. I don't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. In any case, though, there were a lot of really good things about that. Yes, Mark Tang. Oh, so, sorry, I had a comment to make about the Captain Marvel movie. <laughs> They did that with the Fantastic Four and never had the film. Okay. Yeah. Really? Uh, what, was it another reboot? It was in the 90s. Like, oh. did it kind of like release it just enough so that it made sense? So that it like, counted? Yeah. And then never spoke about it again. That's hilarious. Did you guys hear that? <sighs> Apparently they um, had a similar issue in the 90s with Fantastic Four where they needed to hang on to the rights. So they made a movie and released it, like barely released it. Like... They basically made like a non movie and they were like they put it out there and they put like a minimum like like, like they let like 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 let someone watch it in the theater and they're like, Okay, that was its release. Now it's closed. Light on light the one print on fire. Um, despite all that though, I mean, you know, they're still making a movie to, to make money and um, there were a lot of things in this movie that were not very good, just in terms of movie stuff. But then there was a lot of stuff in the movie. That was really good in terms of Spider-Man. Like, I thought his new costume totally sucked. It looked so dumb. It's all, like, sporty, and he's got, like, sneakers on. But then I watched the movie, and I was like, oh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense, because he's just some stupid teenager, and he made a suit by himself, so he got some sneakers. That always confused me about, latex, about, like, about the, the, the previous series, was that they show him first, he's drawn the costume, and it's, like, it's all done up. But then, like, he's there in, like, the sweater and shit. Yeah. And I was like, that's so cool. But then, like, where did he get the better one later? Well, uh, often it, it I, I think, uh, a couple, I know that in Ultimate Spider-Man and probably in the movie, in the first movie, it comes from the wrestling, the, the wrestling guy gets it for him. Okay. The, the, the wrestling people get it for him or something okay. like that. I mean, they may not have been in the movie. I don't know where he got it. Anyway. They never, they never addressed that. They, I was like, if I the know. first one was so shitty, how'd he get so I know. good? So anyway, bad. This, this, this movie was good for a lot of reasons. They killed all his dads, which was really good. Um, all three of them. All his dads. All his dads. Um, you know, they did the villain really well. Gwen Stacy was awesome. Um, they set up a trilogy really, really well. They had Norman Osborn as, like, this faceless figure that was dying, and so they need to figure out the science for him, and that's, like, the catalyst for the whole thing. So Norman Osborn is evil the whole time, even though you never see him or hear him or anything like that. Um, it's super, like, dorky love story, which is really funny. Like, it, it's kind of crappy, because it's, again, that's, like, one of the weakest parts of the film is, like, the romance part, because these kids, like, they don't really have any direction. I'm pretty sure Mark Webb was just like, yeah, act cute, or something like that. And that's kind of just what they did when they were together. But it <sighs> is funny and works for teenagers. And it's, like, 
uh, uh, see, this is me. I'm like, I'm, I'm saying like it so, sucks. So, but so, it was good. people are gonna have to go see it themselves. Go see much. it. Go see it because just go see it. Who cares if they made one ten years ago? Why are you complaining about yeah. them making another movie? We like sh- so many people, so many people are complaining. Like they just made one ten years ago. Why does that hurt you at all if they made one ten? I don't understand what the problem with that is. They're just giving you more movies I think to watch. The, the, what it does puts the expectation out that they're rushing it out just because you know they want a quick buck or because I, they. Why do you care yeah. about that? It devalues the first movies. It, I like those movies. It like, doesn't devalue them, them at all, though. No, those were mistakes. But it doesn't. Them. Well, yeah, it yeah. does that, but only it, it because they're no, 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 but only because you choose to think of it that way, or you could just see it as another movie that they're putting out. Okay. I can see the Holocaust in many different ways as well. It's just a, that's not, that's that's not absolutely <laughs> different. Go smoke. Man, uh, making the new Spider-Man movie was as bad as the Holocaust. That's yeah. I don't Mark know Tang if you says. can hear Mark Tang over here. Uh, in any case, go it's see Spider-Man shit. because you should and watch it. I agree. We should try and find the 90s. Uh, I think I know. I think I've seen it. I think we should try. I don't know. We, let's track it down. Oh, you can hear. It doesn't develop. Yeah, it doesn't devalue the original films. It just muddles the culture that's around them. That's exactly right. Um, which, I'm really into muddled culture, I guess, you know? Go see the movie, because so. it's a super fun movie. I loved it. Like, it was, like, it was awesome. But whether or not it was valuable is another question. Okay. That's the real question. Moving on. Moving on. Oh, we were supposed to have a guest, and we hey, totally... Hey, Batman comes out in uh, 11 days. Just letting you all know. The new Batman movie. Um, that should be interesting. Go see that. Yeah. Um, we've talked about that plenty on this show. We were gonna, our plan was to go grab someone from upstairs and bring them downstairs for a guest, but I don't know if we're going to do that at this point. No, we're not. Okay. You want to play some music? You want to play some music? I don't know. Hey, guys, what do you want us to do? What do you want? What do you want to see? Come on. <laughs> Talk about food. Talk um, about food? I uh, bought some cucumbers today. Um, I'm really excited to eat them. I'm going to cook them tomorrow morning with some kale and some red peppers and throw them in an omelet. That sounds good. Yeah. I, we just got, we just went grocery shopping today, or uh, Mark and Sam did, thus Cake and Dr. Bob. And, A different uh, Mark and Sam than were on this show. Oh, damn. There's been a Mark and Sam on this show. It was a completely different Mark and Sam. Wow. <sighs> anyway, I'm probably going to cook too, but I've been saying, because I eat, like, garbage. Like, literally just, tr- sometimes literally sometimes garbage. Sometimes I see him just, just eat egg but, cartons. Um, just old egg cartons. You know, when you're in school at, Fish like, bones. 3 in the morning, and it's like, well, either I can have, you know, like, a honey bun out of the fucking vending machine or I don't eat today. Yeah. You know? It's like, that's what you're doing. Well, I choose not to eat in that case. Okay. Well, to each his own. But anyway, I that's I have a terrible diet like that. And I keep saying to myself, like, I'm only... I'm, when I'm out of college, turn this ship around. And I, like, saw the fucking light this weekend at, at Swid because um, there were a lot of people there who, like... Um, you know, only eat raw and stuff, and an unbelievably high percentage of gluten intolerant people. I don't know what that. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. I was like, these people all drank the same water in their kids. I don't know. But anyway, all it was, I was like, I wasn't expecting to like it, but it was all like. Just like quinoa and um, lots of quinoa, lots and lots of quinoa, and yep. like just shit wrapped up in big collard green leaves, and yep. it's all wicked good. And I was like, yep. "This is how I'm gonna eat when I get out of college. Yep. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat heavy food, and it's it's so good. That's it is that, good. You know, um, it's hard to eat like that though, especially if you are. Well, that's what I thought, but like, I was always like, "What? Wait, what?" Uh, vegans eat like that doesn't make any sense and then I was like oh this is what they eat and it's not like weird like you're trying to find like if you know what to do and I feel like now I do a little bit better like I was like I could do this this well, would be awesome and I felt so good all weekend well you know I have a really hard time doing that because 
I like I have to eat so much food in order to be satisfied of yeah. my hunger. Oh, I was eating and piles and piles. I, and yeah, that, and that's that's the problem. It's just like I I feel like I I would just be shopping every single day for more and more vegetables if I were to do that, that sort of thing because I, I just have to eat so much food. So vegetables I like vegetables are great. Though. It's hard for me to not eat um, bread. By the way, Sam just meat. wrote no salad on this. Yeah, no salad, no fucking salad. I was man. sad about salad. No, no great. fucking no. I love salad. I, know, I drew a bowl of salad and then I put a thing on it. Oh no, it's Sam McCracken. It's Whatever, right. man. It's just it's a picture. It's art. You think of it however you want. It's a it's it's retor- it's reverse psychology. I'm trying to get you to eat salad. <laughs> okay, it worked. I kind of want salad. Yeah. Also, talking about uh, the food from Swid is making me want vegetables. You just said talking, and now I want tacos. Vegetables with like you know um, full meat and. Tabbouleh on it. I do like tabbouleh. Ah, tabbouleh's good. My I do like it. My dad makes a mean tabbouleh. And, like and uh, a mean baba ganoush. Sometimes you put the two of them together and you have tabbouleh. I love baba, baba and ganoush. And you're like, what am I eating right now? It's like tabbouleh and baba ganoush. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's very happy. <laughs> tabbouleh and baba ganoush. Uh, in other foods, uh, large can of ravioli. For a dollar bargain. That's so cool. I gotta ask you, is that a, is that a whole cent? Like, I got a large can of ravioli for a dollar bargain. Is that like because you put a comma it, there for a dollar bargain? Is that like a dollar bargain? Is that like <laughs> I got it for a dollar bargain, or is that like a dollar bargain? I, I, don't, I don't know. Bargain. I'm gonna start saying that. Bargain. Bargain. Uh, anyway, um, what kind of ravioli was it? Yeah, what kind of, was it like beef ravioli or... Boggle? Taco? Boggle ravioli? Bo- boggle? Whatever. I love Who the boggle. hell is William Feather? Hang on, I got it. Okay, there you go. William Feather with a bracket. Will I am Feather. American publisher out of Cleveland, Ohio. Established the William Feather. This guy has no facts on Wikipedia. Uh, let's look elsewhere. So far, I have nothing <laughs> against him. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a nice guy from his picture. It's, it's he a- said things like, Beware of the man who won't be bothered with details. Or, Setting a good example for children <laughs> takes all the fun out of middle age. Or, <laughs> No, that's it. That's all I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, William Feather's cool. William Feather sounds like a cool dude. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Why are you saying my name? You streamer 995880. Oh, okay, hit me. Hit, Sam, me, with that, it, hit me with that question, babe. Do you shave? Do I shave? I do shave! Uh, wait. Who, are you? who is it? <laughs> Why does it I know make who, a difference? I know who that is. <laughs> I know who's talking. Uh, yeah, I do shave person uh every like i shave i sh- i'm gonna have to shave tomorrow shave like every two and a half days now really wait i don't two and a half doesn't make a as sense. you can I shave see, like every three days i now. don't shave anymore because my girlfriend is in africa but she's getting back day after tomorrow so i'm gonna have to shave have and we been all this awesome beard is gonna watching be conan uh, have we have we been watching? Conan? I haven't been watching. Conan. I haven't been. I don't have a television, and it's harder for me. And for some reason, his clips never work on his website for me. I always try and watch the the clips on his show, but they don't. They don't work. Why I, do you? Ask? I can only assume it's as good as it's always been. Also, person that I thought you were someone else, but you're not that person. You were betting that I don't shave. That's, you got a cute baby face, man. I know I have a cute baby face, Brian. That doesn't mean <laughs> hair doesn't grow out of it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Have we, no, neither of us have been watching Conan. Um, Do you mean Conan O'Brien or Conan the Barbarian? Because I haven't really been watching Conan the Barbarian either, to be honest. Is there a new Conan show? I know there's a new Conan movie coming. Hair out. absolutely grows out of babies. You streamer eight nine nine five eight eight zero. Hair grows out of babies all the time. Have you yeah. ever seen a baby come out of the womb? They got some hair on their head already. It's all matted down. Um. Just so you know, there is a new Conan movie coming out. It's supposed to be really good. It might have like come and gone. 
very silent. And by really good, I don't I don't know, but it's supposed to be much more faithful to the books, where he's less of a brute and more of a clever, cunning. Yeah, he's like a swat. Yeah. He's almost like a swashbuckler. Yeah, not quite a swat. I mean, that's too nautical. But in his comics right now, he's on a he was on a boat. Hey guys, if there my roommate is actually drawing the Conan comics right now. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, has there, have there been any ads, by the way, people watching? Many babies I have seen come out of the womb. Like, <laughs> 50 babies just shooting out of one womb one time, man. It was just like... <laughs> they all had I just hair? Can't even, they all had hair. It was everywhere. There was hair everywhere. I've seen a lot of babies come out of wombs. <laughs> Hang on, this person's gonna say... Also, Ew. You mean the babies come out of wombs? No, I have seen a couple babies come out of womb. Never live, uh, true. Never live, but never actual birth. like never in person, but actual real births. You go to you go to, you go to film them, school. Actually. You've seen six or men seven with a movie camera, obviously. Yeah, that. And you've probably seen window water baby moving. Yeah, so. I, I've seen a few. You watch the business of being born. There's like six babies getting born in that documentary. Yeah. Um, undead. <laughs> Undead babies. Wait, what is that from? <coughs> that allergies are acting Zom- up tonight. Can you tell? Zom babies? What? Yeah, well, it's gross down here. Uh, no, it was always like this. I f- no, really? I don't know. Uh, uh, anyway, um, uh, Zom babies. Yeah, Zom babies. Zombies. Oh, good. We did a really good job killing time tonight. I know. Seriously, guys, that was like 20 minutes. Thank you guys for saying all this crazy shit, or else we wouldn't have much of a show. Settle. Okay, fi- settle another bet. What? Okay, what's the other bet? Hit me. Do I shave my pubic region? You guys should make hand puppets. You guys should make hand puppets. Don't worry. That's actually coming real soon. We're way ahead of you. Just don't even worry about it. <laughs> Six weeks in planning. Okay, what's the other bet that... It was about your pubes. No, that wasn't... I just... I made that up. That wasn't actually there. No, I don't... I don't shave... No, because that would be weird as all get out. You've no, never shaved your pubes? you never no. even tried? No, I have not tried that because... You try it. It's I think it would be really weird. It's interesting. Baby, it. baby weird. Also, it would be really itchy coming back in. A little. No, I don't... It's I don't think I... Do I groom my man region? Do I manscape? Is that a word? Yeah, manscape. It's... You know, making sure your, your junk is going the right direction. Like my penis, making no, sure no, my I'm penis sorry, is no, going. That, that, yeah. <laughs> That's not it. It's, I, going, I mean, it's going this way. I mean, yeah, it's exactly what crane. it sounds like. It's it's trimming, you know, trimming Ooh. the verge. Yeah, I do that because uh, sometimes it gets caught in the zipper or things like that, and it hurts. You gotta like watch that, you know. Anyway, what was the other? What was the bet that you wanted to freaking? I think it was about your stuff? pubes. Or do you vaj- Oh, I absolutely vajazzle, but men don't have vaginas, so I... You have to vajazzle someone else? I butt jazzle. I butt vajazzle. I vajazzle. I vajazzle. I vajazzle my butt. Ain't a jazzle. I got a bedazzler uh, instructional video lying around somewhere we should watch. Can you fit your fist in your mouth? You know, I try like all the time, but I really can't. <laughs> I, have, like, I have really freakishly big fists. For some reason. I don't have big hands, but I have really big fists. I can't do it at all. I can't even get my... I can't even get, like, one finger in. Oh. Try hard. You try harder. Why don't you come down on the show and put your fist in your mouth, huh? Oh, you're doing good. Oh. Don't get your fist caught in there, man. Oh. Don't make that noise, either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got pretty far. I got pretty far. Uh. Ow! I really can't do it. Okay. I can do it like this. Ow. That hurts my lips. Was that the bet that you wanted us to settle? I can't. Whatever, let's sing a fucking Why, comment. you're typing really well with one hand, person. Uh, that... Oh, wait, one more bet, one more bet. Settle this bet. That's going to be a new segment on the show. Settle, <laughs> so, settle this bet. Settle this bet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you behave butt fuzz? What? Do you have butt fuzz? Oh, do you have butt fuzz? Everyone's got butt fuzz. Yeah, who man? doesn't have butt fuzz? That's like saying, do you have eyeball? Wait, well, some people don't have eyeballs. I'm <laughs> even, sure some people even, don't have butt fuzz, but, you know, probably more than don't have eyeballs. Yeah, actually, yeah. 
The less than don't have. Alcohol. Everyone has butt fuzz. That's that's. A I knew stupid a dude who, who told me once. I'm not gonna name any names. They had so much butt fuzz that sometimes his dumps would get caught in it, and he had to pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> like a spider web. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah, like a net. Was that seriously the bet you wanted to settle? <laughs> a stupid bet like that because you just you just I don't know if you won or lost, but either way, you're dumb for taking that bet. One in every five thousand babies is born with a butt. Born without a butthole. Is that true? I don't think that's true at all. And the hospital. Oh, okay. No, I get that. That makes sense. All right. Let's send the comments. It's 1258. Hey, people. Keep typing these hilarious things you're typing we're gonna, because we're, gonna, we're back, gonna sing the comments. We're gonna backtrack a little bit so we have uh, you guys can catch up. So talk about Obama. No, we're not gonna do that. No, we're gonna sing the comments. If you wanna, if you got wanna write some stuff about Obama, we'll be forced yeah, to say we'll, it. Wait. You know what? Let's just start. Start at my fist is in my mouth. I'm typing with one hand. Ah, uh, where is it? There it is, right there. Here, just look off here. Okay. <coughs> do, do you do? We didn't have a sports segment this week because Brian doesn't I'm really like tired. sports. We're gonna do her like next week. Um. Okay. Let's go for it. My fist is in my mouth. I'm tapping with one hair. Okay, last bet. Settle this bet. Do you have butt fun? New segment, set of this bed. Talk about Obama. Yeah, I just invented a segment. True fact. Where does everyone have butt fuzz? One in every five thousand babies is born without a butt hole. <laughs> Keep singing! Hospital <laughs> <laughs> needs to manually create one. Absolutely true. That's a pretty low number. It is. is. It is. Bro. Did you do the sports segment already? You say that every week. Imperating anus by calling on Republicans to approve a one year extension of tax cuts for families earning less than $250,000 a year. President Obama escalated the election year, focused on tax emphasis, emphasizing a key dist. Imperating anus is a defect that is present from birth. Birth out of the congenital. Man, in which the opening of the anus is missing or blocked. The anus is the opening to the rectum through which the stools leave the body. Incidents and risk factors. Synthetic rectum. Synthetic rectum. Imperforate anus may occur in several forms. The, the rectum, rectum may end in a blind pouch that does, does not, not connect with, with the colon. <laughs> Cheese it. It's cheese it. It's a blind pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, the rectum may have openings to the urethra, bladder, base of the censored or scrotum in boys or censored in girls. Don't speak ill of Jesus. We got all Jesus right now. There may be narrowing stenosis of the anus or no anus. The problem is caused by a normal development of the fetus. Many forms of imperturbable anus occur with other birth defects. It occurs in about one of five thousand eight thousand symptoms. Anal opening very near the censored opening in girls. 
Baby does not pass the first two within 24 to 48 hours after birth. Missing or moved opening to the anus. Want to see, see my, my upstairs, downstairs mix-up? Swollen belly area. As with most birth defects, there's no known prevention. What? That was... <laughs> <laughs> really something. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Perfect Anus and Obama. <laughs> what, what, what's the actual fanatic? name? Uh, we were saying perforated, and that doesn't make any sense. A perforated anus is a whole different project <laughs> problem. <laughs> it's perfor uh, per per. <coughs> wait, get thrown up there one last per, time. It's like perfor perforate perfory like a perfory anus. Imperforate perforate. Imperforate, imperforate anus. No, perforate anus. Perforate. Per perforate perforate. Anus. Or something. Thank you, butt fuzz. Uh, hey, if you haven't already liked the McCracken at Midnight Facebook page, do that so I don't have to invite you every week because it is really taxing to invite all ten of you. Uh, also, um, put some suggestions on there for new segments or things we should um, talk about. I, and or, we're go, we are going to do bets. We're going to do, yeah. um, we're going to do settle this bet. Settle this bet. New <coughs> segment. Thank you. You streamer nine, nine, five, eight, eight, zero. So think of bets you need us to settle. Um, and, um, and tell your friends to watch what cracking at midnight. Get people who we don't necessarily yeah, know. I mean, we love watch. the three of you watching you guys tonight. Are great. Like, that's we're trying to expand awesome. our, we're trying to expand our audience right now. Yeah. So. Uh, an average of nine is good. But days like this is what brings that average down from 10. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, tell your friends. Invite your friends to watch McCracken at Midnight. Um, tell your parents because we'd love to embarrass tell, you. Tell your grandparents. Tell your grandparents. Tell, tell, tell your, your little tiny nieces. And tell nephews. your nieces and nephews. I'm sure that they would love to hear about Imperfect Anus. <laughs> <laughs> and if, censored girl if, parts if, if one in, and butthole jazzling. If one in 5,000 uh, people, you know, infants have it, I bet some of your nieces and uh, nephews had been perforate anuses. So, um, you know, yeah. I'm in here. So, uh, tune in next week to watch us hopefully play some sports. Uh, hear some updates about some other junk that um, is not hear really important tang to your talk life. About typeface. Hear Tang talk about typeface for five minutes. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a guest star. Uh, we have uh, one of two possibilities next week. Actually, I think that we should go for one of them. One person is uh, someone who's building a cool robot, and the other person is uh, my other nerdy half. Uh, so let's hope for one of those next week. Um, we're way over our time limit. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thanks we love you for watching the show, and don't forget to <laughs> go to the bathroom when you wake up in the morning.